Hi and welcome to Synapse. This video is slightly different from the previous videos on our channel. Um, today we are going to talk about NEAT pre PG preparation and this has been a highly requested video. Um, who am I to give you tips on PG preparation? So uh, myself Dr. Sonica, I finished my internship in March 2019 and I appeared in the NEET PG examination that happened this year and uh, I got an All India rank of 4100 and I have taken up MS General Surgery in a government college in Karnataka. So uh, I have a list of uh, FAQs that my juniors and my friends have asked so I shall uh, address all those questions in this video. Hope you find it useful. So what do you expect from the video? Uh, we're going to talk about the NEAT PG exam pattern. Okay, and I'm going to talk about the approach that I used. Okay, so if you find it, you know, good and useful, you can incorporate it into your study plan. And uh, next we'll talk about the study plan. Okay, and how to manage your time and the mindset training that's required for the exam. So the first question that uh, I asked, mo uh, that I get asked most often is, when is the right time to start preparing? Now, if you are an intern or a post intern, well, you won't be asking this question because you have only eight months, ten days for the exam, right? So it's high time you've already started preparing. If not, okay, continue watching this video. Okay, we'll talk about study plans and how to get your um you know study more organized okay and then if uh, you are an undergraduate student and then i would suggest uh while you're studying for your board exams okay your uh, semester exams whatever it is you have to do it concept wise okay do not study for the exam with the mindset that all you have to do is just pass the exam that's not what it is it is understanding the concept right and for undergraduates, yes, as I said, you have to understand the concept. So that is applicable right from your first year of MBBS. But if you're taking like a coaching or something, neat directed notes making, coaching and revision, doing questions, I think that should start during your third year. Okay, that's what at least I did. And I found it, uh, you know, really convenient uh, to start during third year. So uh, I would live by this quote that is if you cannot explain it simply you don't understand it well enough. So when you read a particular concept try to explain it to your friends, your colleagues, your um, you know hostel mates or if no one is available just do it to yourself okay. So explain it. So when you do that you start seeing loopholes in your concept. If you have not understood something then you won't be able to explain it. Right? So that's when you know you have to stop there, revisit your textbook, standard textbooks or any other resource and build your concept. Okay, That's the word for the undergraduates. Then let's talk about the exam pattern. So the exam is around, will be somewhere in the first month of January. Okay, sorry, first week of January, I mean. So uh, the date keeps changing. So you have to look, uh, keep checking the NBU website for that. And then there are 300 multiple choice questions that are to be answered in 3 hours, 30 minutes time. So that's a total of 2, 10 minutes. So if I break, up, break down that math for you, it would be 40 to 42 seconds per question. So that means within 40 seconds, you need to read the question go through the answers that's the options and then arrive at an answer and mark it so a lot needs to be done in less amount of time that's where practice comes into picture it's not just how much you have read okay it also it matters like how much you have practiced okay how much of time have you given to it right so uh, that is also an important part so we'll we'll talk about that in our study plan later how we include that then the portions we have bloody 19 subjects okay that is right 19 subjects to cover so that's why you need to have a systemic plan okay how to work this out okay so this i would say is a very very important table if you already have this with you great if you don't then take a screenshot or write it down in a piece of paper or just print this and put it 
uh, at, uh, like near your study table okay just have a look at this thing every single day right now uh, what does this table really tell us okay just go through this medicine dermat psychiatry all three subjects put together you get a total of 45 questions so the second row is the number of questions and the third row is really telling you about the percentage of time that you need to spend on that particular subject now uh, see if you see for example medicine if you open up medicine if you try to read okay the whole of medicine it is impossible it's practically impossible to finish everything right i think um i myself i did not finish medicine completely during my final year okay and now with uh, 18 other subjects it's impractical you cannot do that so there has to be some amount of time you need to restrict yourself okay um whether you know what is the time frame within which you need to finish a particular subject that is why this table is important some people can read a subject forever okay and if you do not concentrate on the other subjects you will lose out on your score as such okay so all of this is very important to perform well in an exam like neat okay so then surgery ortho anesthesia radio again total of 45 questions OBG 30, PSM 25, Patho 25, Pharmac 20, Micro 20. So till here, okay, what, do you, what is it that we notice? Now OBG is one subject, one subject carrying 30 questions, okay, is the highest yield from this table, okay. Second, PSM and Patho, okay, 25 questions each. Fine, you might say, okay, look, medicine, derma, psych, all put together is 45 now if you look at it if you break it down individual subjects if you take it's not as much yielding as obg and psm correct so what i would suggest okay is have a look at the table okay give priorities to the subjects based on the number of questions that come right and then uh, as you see anat is 17 physio is 17 biochem is 16 but on the other hand forensic is 10 ent of the pdr 10 each right so the priority okay um, um, in which you take up the subjects for your studying should be determined by this table and then what i would suggest is in your plan you take up a major subject like let's say obg and then space it with a minor okay you can do dermatology in between and then move on to psm and then do another minor like psychiatry and then move to pathology then do orthopedics and then PAMAC like that you know just take a major subject interspace it with minor subjects so minor include derma psych ortho anesthesia radio and down here forensic ent ophthal and pediatrics because they're all like having lesser number of questions so you can do a major and a minor now let's talk about the third row that is the percentage of time that is to be allotted now uh, this is a table that is to be worked out and filled by yourself okay i have all have mentioned is the percentage of time to be given i have not mentioned how many hours because how many hours you put into study is very variable now if you're an intern the number of hours you get is less if you're a post intern you have the whole day to study right so how many ever hours you're able to put in in a day okay let's say a post intern is able to put eight to ten hours a day okay and you have eight months Eight, 8 months 10 days of time so 10 hours into so many days and then you make 4 is 15 percent of that and then you fill in this table in, ter in, in, in uh, terms of hours okay how many hours are you giving to a particular subject okay now if you're an intern okay I'll talk about that a little later you get you know lesser time to do that so uh, accordingly 15 percent of that okay that is how much you should give it give to the uh, medicine derma side okay like that so that's how you use this table i would suggest you take a print out of this and put it somewhere in your study room okay okay next now you decide okay there are 19 subjects you know the uh, preference in which you need to take up this subject you know the number of questions coming from each of these subjects and how much of time to allot now you open the book okay so uh, you get lost okay you don't know what to read Okay, this is it, ha it happens okay most of the time and I think with everyone actually so what is it that you should do first is to identify the high yield topics okay because as I said medicine is impossible to do whole of it correct so now there is something called the 2080 uh, rule okay 
That means 20% of your effort will give 80% of the result and 80% of the effort will give only 20% of the result. So what smart students do is that they identify these topics, the high yield topics and put that 20% effort there. Okay, as in you're doing less effort because you're studying less number of topics, but they're high yielding. So they will result, they'll give 80% of your result. So always keep this thing in mind, okay, and identify the high yield topics for each and every subject. Now, how do you do this? Okay, uh, if, if you want me to do it, if you want me to put up a list of high yield topics for a particular subject, do mention in the comment section below. I shall go through that and make a separate video on that. But uh, I'm just telling it off. How, how exactly do you identify the high yield topics? If you have these, uh, you know, guidebooks or MCQ books that, used to, uh, that you normally use, just go to the question section skip the explanation just go to the question part right now under a heading they all they're going to do it is like divide the questions or segregate the questions based on the topics right so like let's say for example hepatitis b so questions on hepatitis b in medicine right uh, let's say there are like 40 questions so that means it is extremely high yield topic on the other hand you have a topic where there are just like four five questions it's a minor topic right so depending upon the number of questions that have been asked repeatedly on a particular topic that topic will become high yield topic so what you do is before you sit to study identify all the high yield topics from that particular subject and make an index okay for yourself for that particular subject so keep that index okay if you have a notebook in which you're making you know jotting down your notes and stuff like that and talk about notes making in a while so that index is extremely important and that goes in the beginning of the book okay the first page of it okay that's how you make the list if you want me to make a video on that please do comment okay next we'll talk about the study plan as of now we have eight months ten days to go right okay so uh, this is how I divided my study period. Okay, there's no hard and fast rule. You can do how many of revisions you want. So this is how I worked it out. So this is uh, like I studied with along with my internship. So I was able to fit this much into my schedule. So what I did was first reading for the first like during the six months time. Okay, now I, I'm just trying to tailor it according to the time that is remaining. Eight months, ten days. So for the the first six months, we're going to do the first reading. Now, what exactly happens in our first reading? I'll tell that. And next, we go into the first revision that lasts for one month, fifteen days. And the last fifteen days, we're going to do the, only the high yield point revision. That will be our second revision. So. Coming to the first reading. So what do we do in our first reading? You have to select a source first. Which book, which material, what is your resource? Okay, for studying those 19 subjects. So it might be different for different subjects or if you're going to some kind of coaching like some people go to dams, Bhartia, whatever. Some people use Maro. So how many, how many ever resources are, where, are available? If you're convenient with that, just go ahead. Use a particular resource. But at the end of it, okay, all of that will culminate into what is called notes right so yes so notes making is is an art okay it is extremely important i cannot highlight it more than this because that's what you're going to read later on that forms the manual that you're going to follow for your exam so i can make another video a separate video on notes taking i can take up a topic and uh, show you exactly in real time how notes is made for that particular topic okay so if you want that please do mention in the comment section i should make a separate video on notes making so the essence of first reading is use your resource if you're going to classes do that if you're using online videos do that if you're using guidebooks yes read them and ultimately you must have notes right okay and next first revision what do you do is you read your notes that's all okay things will seem very new okay you might be like i didn't even read this before okay that happens it's perfectly all right okay all you have to do is convert your short term into long term okay so strengthen those synapses you know and then that will help you retain so you should be like it's okay yeah and then just read the notes okay read it again and again that happens in this one month 15 days period along with doing i mean reading your notes do some mcqs okay so personally i used uh, marrow q bank i found it really useful so you might be having so many other resources 
use them do the questions one reason why i would um, you know not suggest doing questions doing questions during your first reading time is that like you have read something today obviously you remember it at the end of the day so if you're doing questions at the end of the day any tom dick harry can do it because it's it's very simple you've just done it in the morning you're just vomiting that thing in the during while you're doing your questions so if you do it after six months what really happens is you're really putting stress and on like you know some amount of effort on the your brain to remember what you have read and when you revise and then do questions it helps you know form those um Uh, synapses and basically the neuroplasticity concepts com- uh, comes into action and it will help you uh, you know to retain concepts and things better okay um so that's what happens first revision is notes reading with mcq solving coming to the second revision this happens 15 days before the exam so here you're not exactly sitting and reading the whole day you're revising only only the high yield concepts right okay the first is notes making then while you're doing your first revision you mark the things that are to be read you know before the exam so i as i told you it's an art you want me to elaborate this thing in in you know much greater detail then definitely i'll do a different video on that please do mention in the comment section if you want it but um, notes making is extremely important okay so in second revision you do only the important point revision and 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 during this time you start solving full length papers okay you sit for 3 and 1/2 hours you're going to go through all those 300 questions whether you know it you don't know it it's like you're taking a real exam okay you're going to simulate that and your brain has to get adjusted to it in a biological system also has to get adjusted to it correct so and this is the time where you develop your exam strategy okay do not think about your marks until the last 15 days okay when you're doing full length papers that is when you start thinking about yes what is your strategy how many questions should you attempt okay what is your attempt rate what is your uh, percentage of getting you know questions right okay how many questions are going wrong how much are you losing in your negative marking right so that is when you develop a strategy and my strategy is different from yours and you all need to work it out on your own okay so as i said if i make a different video on notes making i'll definitely walk you guys through this in more detail okay so this this video has to be short and concise okay so moving on uh, this section is basically for the interns who are working right now and and this i know is very challenging cuz i've been through this myself um there has to be a balance between your work okay that is your job that you're doing in the morning and you know studies that you have to you know make out time for so <laughs> this is very tricky i i know this but how i survived this was that you do your job there's there's no comments compensation there there's no the no sh- shortcuts cuz some some cases you see uh, in your clinics the way your consultant approaches or the way you only you know figure out things okay some procedures that you learn by yourself there will be questions on that in the exam okay you can't say it's just the book reading that fetches me marks um that doesn't happen there are some practical questions some procedure based questions okay that you will be able to answer only if you have done this procedure yourself or you observed or you have attended uh, the rounds okay so the way your consultants um, uh, arrive at a diagnosis or the way they uh, elicit the differentials and and so many things so that clinical uh, training uh, is extremely important okay uh, don't think that it is a burden okay it it is really important that you finish your duty and but what i did is uh, the last 15 days before the exam i had my emergency posting so it was uh, not possible for me to cope up both so the last 15 days i took off which i repeated later on um so you can think of that like if you have a really hectic posting and then your co-interns are ready to help you it's just day, the you know few days before the exam then i would say go ahead take break talk to your uh, you know unit heads and the in charge uh, in charge professors before you do that don't take decisions by your own talk to them and then you know take their permission and then take time you know to study and then uh, about about my studies uh, i used to and i have a minimum of 3 to 4 hours of study during my internship um 
how we can you manage you know to squeeze three to four hours uh, wake up early okay let's say um, max okay you might have to go to your duty at 8 but most of the times it will be 8 8 30 correct so if you wake up at 5 okay so 5 to 7 okay you get like two hours of solid time where you can study and morning hour studying is like it's extremely important because it helps retain you know uh, things better so morning studies is always better than you know studying late at night, late night but it might be different for people but that's how that's it has scientific you know basis now so two hours in the morning and then after duty come back home in the evening take a little bit of rest and then uh, another two hours at night so probably from 8 to 10 right so go, go to bed at 10 sharp so because you have to wake up early in the morning tomorrow that's around five so somehow you'll be able to squeeze two hours in the morning two hours in the evening so that's like total of four hours and then as i said that percentage of time for every subject so work that out write that table down okay fill it for yourself how many hours you got for a particular subject and just start working on it okay so uh, interns post interns you'll be able to do it so no problem just to stick to your plan and just keep reading that's all nerd on so in terms it's totally doable okay uh, the last and the most important section is mindset training okay physically yes you you accumulate resources you have got your seniors advice you got like really good stationery you got everything ready that's all physical that's outside unless your mind you know adapts to what you're going to okay it has to receive everything that you're giving it has to retain until unless that happens you don't see the results and once this happens you see miracles happening right so this is extremely important start your day with positive affirmations okay before you sit to study read something very positive okay some it, it might be spiritual for some people religious for the other and some people they just want to read some positive quotes okay you can fill your room with that or you know have a collection of such quotes on your phone read one every day okay and read it like two to three times because that affirmation has to seek you know seep down in your subconscious level so first is start your day with something positive okay extremely important now uh, then start your day uh, with you know some amount of physical activity Correct. So you need to heat, eat healthy and exercise a bit because the high chances that all you're going to do throughout the day now is just like sit and read, right? So you're going to put a lot of weight, put on a lot of weight. And then so you need to balance that. So physical uh, activity is extremely important. And then sleep well too, okay? So have around six and a half, seven hours of adequate sleep every day. Then uh, don't be hard on yourself, okay? take adequate breaks um, reward yourself uh, you know after completing significant amount of portions right treat yourself and then yeah don't forget to watch Avengers okay it's okay it's totally fine it's just like take two and a half three hours of time meet your friends watch amazing movie it's totally fine okay you're totally worth it and um, Remember, you are responsible for whatever happens to you. Take charge of your life and just imagine what the person you want to be would be doing right now and just get to work, okay? And it is not who you are that stops you. It is who you think you're not, right? And I think I think this quote is very powerful and it means something uh, to me and I would always have this on my wall. So I hope I have, you know, done justice in uh you know giving you the information that i have okay and uh, if you want separate videos on the high yield topics and notes making or similar videos like this if you have any other queries uh do uh leave it in the comment section and if you have some any you know other um study techniques that were that you find very useful you can share it with us you know and the other medicos who are preparing for need right now it would be really really uh, you know helpful okay so thank you so much like share and subscribe thank you